The railways of Britain, in their prime, are the most powerful railways on earth. And these railways are the power behind the docks and industries that make up Great Britain. These are the tales of the Big Four. This was to be the first real shock for us all here. As the British government was to announce that the UK was at war with Germany, I had to ready my engines for the worst of it in case we did get attacked. I hope we didn't, so this is the story I told. Hello engines, I've got some good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? The good news first, please sir. Very well. I've recently purchased an engine. He'll be arriving tomorrow afternoon, so please make him feel welcome. What kind of engine is he, sir? Brighton, that doesn't matter at the moment. Mr. Todd mentioned that it's some bad news. Anyway, sir, what's the bad news? Thanks, Caprice. The UK government put out a radio broadcast yesterday evening saying that now in the coming weeks we'll be at war with Germany and their allies. We may get raids, so be careful when out and about. If you hear any raid sirens, take cover anywhere you can. Don't expose yourself out in the open where planes may spot you. Okay, sir. What about talking cover in stations? Some stations, maybe, but still be careful. Anyways, that's all for today. Just normal jobs with reduced passenger services as we've been requested to export freight to help with the front line. I can see now this won't be fun. It'd be a miracle if we don't get attacked. Nothing fun about war, Brighton. Anyways, I best get going. Got my first train to take today. Oh yeah, before I forget, Brighton, I've requested the workmen at Morton Heath to have you repainted into black. But why, sir? I like my colour at the moment, though. No arguing, Brighton. I've got better stuff to do. <laughs> at least I'll be the same colour now. The engines all went to work. That evening came around when the new engine arrived into the yards. He didn't say much at first before Dominic spoke up who was the first to see the newcomer. Oh, hello there. Are you lost? No, not really. I was told to go to a large yard. Can't quite remember the name the station master told me. Was it then where you were told to come to? Yes, I think so. If this is the right place, may I just say what a big yard it is? Uh, so, what's your main purpose? Oh, don't think I asked your name, though. I'm Capri, by the way. Heavy freight, but I can also handle passenger trains as well. Some of my brothers built alongside me run on the Somerset and Dorset. It's quite a steep line, so we have to be good at climbing hills. Heavy freight, you say? I bet I'm stronger than you. Max, shut up. Don't be boastful now. You're strong. Yes, we know that. But Mr. Todd probably got Carlisle here for another reason, other than help you and the twins out. What twins? We have a few. He means us, you imbecile. But it's also me and Brighton, don't forget. Yes, and to help out with the war effort. I sure do know that's going to be hard work for us all. The engines gradually fell asleep, but Geoffrey stayed awake as he wasn't in the shed. 
He could hear the quietness of the whole town with a few cars in the distance passing by. I have a funny feeling these upcoming weeks won't be what we expect them to be. I suppose we'll have to see what becomes of it. The next day, Mr. Todd had already given the engines their day's work. Carlisle was sitting at the water tower as Max rolled up to fill up on more coal. I know why you're here. You've come to take over from Hamish, haven't you? What? No, not at all. I'm only here to help out with the war, plus some more passenger duties. I was told that Ellie is getting on a bit, and next month she'll need to go for an overhaul. That's lies, I know it. I'll make sure you leave after she's back. Max, that's enough of that. Leave Carlisle alone. What he says is true. Miss Todd told him that when he first arrived. Ellie's getting older by the day. She isn't as strong as she used to be. It's the way he's going, I'm afraid, and at some stage we'll release too, Max. You'll see. That's not true. I'll outlive you all. Oh, never mind him. It's not as before. Max doesn't like change. That's all. He'll go over it later. Thank you, Capri. You've already proven yourself to be a great friend to me. Meanwhile at the docks, Rupert was shunting some flatbeds into place for the cranes to load new vehicles for the war. This is not what I expected. I sure hope I don't need to take all of these by myself. Nope. Not to worry, little Rupert. We're here for that. Oi! Who are you who do you think you are, Colin Little? Yes, I may be smaller than you, but I'm just as useful. I'd like to see you navigate the tight turns here. Easy. No wonder why we have six wheels, because we were designed for jobs like this in the dockyards. Rubbish. I bet your designer designed you that way because he's just lazy. He wasn't lazy in the slightest. He was quite the man. Anyways, Midget, we'd best be off. We are expected at Deadway at 5 p.m. The twins leave the docks with the long train of flatbeds and vans full of supplies for the front line. Well, I never. Carlisle was waiting at Broughton Parkway with a suburban train when all of a sudden raid sirens started to go off. He reversed under the canopy to avoid line of sight. In the distance, he saw Leonard with a train, hurrying to get to the station, as there was also a plane chasing him. Oh no, I best get to the station, otherwise I'm toast. A few shots ricocheted off his cab roof, luckily not piercing it. A few more shots followed, inches from his side tanks hitting the ground. Leonard, it's getting closer. Just get under cover and hopefully it'll fly away. Oh, thank goodness I'm safe now. That was one of the scariest things I've ever done. We'd better shelter in here for the time being, in case there are any more flying overhead. We'd better not risk our drivers or passengers getting shot at. We're more lucky than they are. If it hits us, it'll probably just bounce off or make a small dent. Yeah, you're right. They waited a while, the passengers cowered in the coaches till it died down. It was late evening by the time Carlisle and Leonard were able to leave the station, just as Rory puffs up with supplies for the city. Are you two okay? We're far from okay. I nearly got shot. It was a close call for sure. I saw the plane earlier, chasing Leonard. I didn't want to risk leaving the station. 
That's a sensible idea. Caring for your passengers. Anyways, I've come here with supplies, and to tell you two you're safe to come back to Denway, Mr. Todd recommends leaving lights off due to the planes maybe spotting you again. Thanks, Rory. You can double head back with me if you'd like. Sure can do. The three engines head back to Denway. It's nightfall when they arrive. Mr. Todd had already been to speak to the other engines to pass the message on, as he knew about the delay. Glad to see you three are now safe. It's really starting to get worse, isn't it? Yeah, we best be careful though. Anyone else have an encounter with a plane, did I? It's not funny, Dominic. This war business is a serious matter. I wasn't making a joke out of it. The war is not a laughing matter. Good. Keep it that way. Anyways, the message Mr. Todd wanted us to pass on to you latecomers was tomorrow he's not coming down to the sheds as he has to visit other parts on the railway to make sure everyone is prepared for what's it to come soon. I hope this all dies down soon. It's hectic with the amount of work we've been given. Whatever, Dom. Just suck it up and deal with it. Jeez, at this rate, Hamish, we may need to double hit an extra long train. There seems to be quite a lot of passengers. Aye, they're out there. Maybe later we should do that. There is a loud bang heard in the distance as Carlisle and Hamish are sitting at the Denway station. Then they hear gunshots rapidly getting closer towards them. Oh my gosh! Hamish, take cover! I hope the plane doesn't spot us! It's bound to spot us. Our smoke's building into the air. We best protect the passengers though. Everyone get into the coaches! We may be lucky. It's changed course and flown across the trees. We'd better leave so as not to attract any more attention. Good shout. See you later, Carlyle. Be safe out there, right? The engines depart the station, Carlyle leading first, with Hamish not long after. However, it would take a turn for the worst soon.